Today I've invited one of my favorite students, Tay, to help me as an assistant. And we're going to try to make a fresh pasta dish for you. I call it Pasta Rounds. And um, this actually has an origination. I, f I first discovered this dish. It was served to me at Delfino's restaurant, and it was so wonderful. But I came up with my own little way of making it. I don't know their recipe per se, but I do know that there was a little goat cheese and some ricotta, and it was just a delicious dish. So here we go. We're going to start with a fresh pasta. And so I'm going to have Tay go ahead and beat those four eggs. Those are four medium eggs, and I've also added just a half a teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil. And we're going to actually use that as our liquid for our fresh pasta. The fresh pasta starts out just as simple flour. And all I'm going to do is make a well in the middle. But first, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. So there's just a little bit of flavor. And that's about a teaspoon of salt I'm going to mix in. And we're just going to mix that in really well, get the lumps out. And then you can do this two ways. Mario Batali and other really experienced chefs have you actually just throw it right here in a mound and do it right on the, uh, on the surface. But just for my purposes, I'm going to go ahead and do it in the bowl. So, Tay, if you would mind, wouldn't mind just throwing that in there. Thank you. Now, we could do a couple things. We can actually hand mix this at this point by keeping everything in the well. If I could get a, just a close-up right here of the well. Or, if you have a KitchenAid mixer, some of you do, some of you don't, you can do it in the KitchenAid mixer just with the dough hook attachment, which does the same thing here. Essentially, it mixes it very, very, very slowly. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and mix it up until it's a really good dough, and then I'm going to knead it till it's elastic. Now, in order for pasta to be rolled out, you really have to let it rest for at least 30 minutes. So I went ahead and made another dough. So I'm just going to make this into a dough so you can sort of see the final. You just keep adding it little by little, and then you knead it till it's really smooth and elastic. I would knead it for a good 5 to 10 minutes. So I'm almost there. As you can see, it's picking up the periphery of the flour really nicely. And I'm going to get to a point where I can't really pick up much more, and then I'm going to just have to knead it in. So basically, we've got a big ball of pasta dough now, and we just have to knead it. So, Tay, if you'd help me knead this, I'll get you some better bench flour. And we'll go ahead and knead this sucker till it's really smooth. And meanwhile, while she's kneading that dough, Good. Perfect. I'm going to actually remind you that I had previously made a pasta dough for us because um, I know that this has to rest for 30 minutes, as I said earlier. So I went ahead just to make it a little bit quicker and went ahead and made a, a pasta dough that has been resting for, I'd say, about 45 minutes now. Um, and you can sort of tell this is an egg pasta dough because of the color. If we just made a f uh, regular pasta dough out of flour and water, it would just be, it would just look like a noodle or look like flour. But this is an egg pasta. Um, I also have a pot of boiling water going because as soon as I roll this out, I'm going to want to blanch them very, very quickly in hot water and cook them very, very quickly. But before I roll this guy out, I just want to start on my filling. So what I have here is I have a cup and a half of ricotta, and that's going to be my base. And to that, I'm going to add four cloves of garlic, which I've minced. Well, Tay minced. Actually, I can't take the credit. She did a very good job. And then I'm going to add two-thirds of a cup of goat cheese, which gives it a really nice creamy. This is a chev, so this is a very mild goat cheese. just gives it a really nice... <coughs> Flavor. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of freshly grated Parmesan, about half a cup. And I'm going to add another half a cup of mozzarella. And then a little bit of basil. I have dried basil here. 
teaspoon of it. And then, of course, black pepper and red pepper, my, my go-tos. Yeah, you're doing beautifully. I would add a little bit. It's a little sticky, so you need to add flour. Good, good, good. And then when you're done, sweetheart, we're gonna just wrap that sucker. Um, let it rest. Okay, about a quarter of a teaspoon of this, half a teaspoon of the black pepper, and lastly, just a tiny bit of salt. The goat cheese is pretty salty, as is the Parmesan, so I don't need a lot of salt. Um, I try to cook with limited amounts of salt anyway, so just, just a half a teaspoon is plenty. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up. The other thing I went ahead and made was just a very, very simple marinara sauce. I just made it out of dicing a couple um, yellow onions, sauteing them in olive oil, adding my crushed tomatoes with um, about seven cloves of garlic. I added about two cans of tomato and um, just let it simmer for all day and salt and pepper. This is our, our filling. I'm gonna taste it just to make sure there's enough salt and pepper. It's perfect. Good. There are two ways that you can roll pasta. Um, I usually roll it just with a rolling pin. I don't have a pasta machine at home, and I've really never used a pasta machine. So I'm gonna show you both ways. Uh, the pasta machine, not only do you need a kitchen aid, but you need one of these attachments. And not everyone has one. And they stick right into here, to this attachment area. And then you turn them on very, very slowly and let them go through. Um, but for uh, the purpose of doing it two ways, I'm just gonna divide the dough in half. And some we're gonna roll out. Could you please grab some bench flour, sweetie? Um, she's gonna grab a handful of flour and put it down here. Um, this dough was actually perfect, and now it's gotten a little tacky out here, thank you. Um, but that's okay, as long as we keep it really nice and floured. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and cut it. And Tay, if you would grab a roller, I think I've got one behind me. Do I have one there? Here I go, honey. And if you can roll one of these out really, really, really flat and try to do it as a rectangle. Let's see about rolling these guys. Good. Good. Okay, so I'm gonna take your flat one. I'm gonna have you work on this, and I'm gonna put this one through my pasta roller because she's made it perfect. Um, actually, I might even divide this in half because I think it's, it's a lot of pasta to go through. And turn it on. Now, the first thing is we have to check to make sure that we are at the right opening. You wanna be at the biggest opening, which would be number one. Turn it in. On, and then we're going to go through this about three times. And when you go through this machine, this actually needs the dough for you. It's wonderful. But what you have to do is you have to, gorgeous, thank you. You have to actually go like this into thirds and roll it out, if you don't mind rolling that out again. Let me grab this one for her. And you're gonna do that in thirds, the first two or three times you go through the biggest opening. Because what that does is it really needs it. It makes sure that everything is really well needed. Thank you, sweetheart, I'll, ch I'll change. You, yeah. That's, yeah. Do, do this one. Okay. Now this 
stove is looking so good. I might not go through that many times because it's really so well needed. And also, it's a little boring. So I'm just going to make it, make it happen a little bit faster now. But if you're starting from scratch, you want to do it three times. Now you're going to turn this off and go to the next level, which is a number two. Turn it back on. And this is really going to flatten it substantially. pasta wrap. So let's let's wrap this if you don't mind in the uh, wrap. Okay, now I just finished a number two, so I've got to do a number three. Open and close it. Turn it on. Feed it through. You want to feed it very, very slowly and always support it. Holding on to it. Depending on how thick you want your pasta, you could stop here. This would be perfectly fine. It's really a good sheet. Um, I want mine a little bit thinner, but you have to be careful about getting it too thin because then you run the risk of the pasta tearing or cooking too quickly and falling apart. It's really nice looking pasta. So I think I'm going to stop right about there. I do want it on the thicker side. Actually, maybe I'll do one more. I'll push it one more time. Because it's looking so nice, I think I can get it a little bit longer. Yeah, that's good. Also, it's good to make sure that you flour. Always put down your dough into flour. Gorgeous. Perfect. And it's smooth. I kind of like to be able to see my fingers through the pasta dough a little bit. So that's absolutely perfect. Just what I want. Okay, so for this recipe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook this. It's literally blanching because you're just throwing it into boiling water for 30 seconds and taking it out. Um, I'm going to actually continue baking this pasta dish in the oven. So I just want to make this pliable and I want to make sure it's cooked pasta. But remember, fresh pasta cooks in 30 seconds to about a minute. It cooks very, very quickly. So this is already salted and I'm just going to lay this in. And we can actually wrap this little guy for later. Thank you, lovey. And I'm just going to let it boil for really 30 seconds. And it's coming right up to the top. You can actually see it. It floats up just just like a dumpling would float up or um, a ravioli. And I'm going to take it out. Get this water out of here. And then the next thing is I'm going to hit it with cold water to stop the cooking process. I don't want to overcook my noodle, so I'm sticking it in really cold water. And here we have our fully cooked noodle, which is great. Tay, would you please grab uh, the seal wrap for me, honey? And I'm going to now trim it. Thank you, love. Perfect. And lay that down. Good, good, good. And I'm going to dry my little noodle. Good, perfect. And then what I'm going to do is actually put it on this, which makes it a lot easier to deal with. So let's bring this over here. We're going to fill it now. So I've got my filling. I'm just going to 
lay that in. And now what I'm going to do is just really carefully roll this guy. There we go. Perfect. And that is it. I have rolled my beautiful pasta rounds. That's all I need to do. And now, the fun stuff. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my marinara sauce and put it just in the bottom of my pan. Just to give it a little bit of something to sit in. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and cut my pasta rounds. And you want to be kind of careful when you cut them so that they don't fall apart too much. So you have to be just a little gentle with cutting them. There we go. And then I also put a little bit of cheese on the very top. But what's so wonderful about this pasta, the pasta is already cooked. So what it does now is it gets this sort of crispy, wonderful texture that's similar to the outside or the top of a lasagna. And yet it stays really moist and creamy on the inside because of all of the cheese. We have, I think, three, no, four cheeses. Ricotta, goat cheese, mozzarella, parmigiana. So it really is a nice, creamy dish. And if you're not cheese lovers, you can use squash or vegetables, broccoli, raw, anything you like, you can stuff. It's a, this this uh, is a very easy dish to make. It looks a little more complicated, but once you make it, you'll see it's, it's really a dream. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of Parmesan cheese on it over here. I just grated this. I grated it with some Romano, so it's a little bit more flavor. Okay, and that is basically it. I would cook this at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. And this is a wonderful, hearty vegetarian dish. I hope you enjoy pasta rounds. And thank you, Tay, for joining us. It was great to have you. Thank you. And thank you, BATV.